Without wasting time, I think I should just go because of our time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I think we are just been we have been led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Although we kind of have a sketch. <laughs> That's the only way I can say it. I think we have a sketch of what we we intend to do. But I uh, know God has a better plan for yeah. all of Amen. us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, I was looking at the one of the scriptures, which I always it always reminds me of things that um, many many times when things are happening, and I know it, it just pop up in my mind. You know that that chapter where Bishop was talking about in verse sixteen said, "Behold, I send you forth as sheep." In the midst of wolves, yeah. but ye therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as those. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's us as Christians. Yeah. When you are serving God sincerely, <clears throat> you know that this world does not want you. Yeah. And we need also to know that we are just pilgrimage here. We are aliens. That's why we describe us. Yeah. We are on assignment. We have a home. Yeah. We have a we have we have a place where we come from. Where we will definitely go and give account of everything that we are sent to do. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you, worship and praise your name. Thank you once again, even as we are here, that you will speak through me. Open up our hearts, open our mouths, and speak unto us. And let your name be exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. While we were preparing for this meeting, several times I asked God, no, I mean, you know, as an apostle, for from when I could crawl, I knew what I was supposed to be. But why well, you can't even say man as an apostle? And you as a woman think of yourself and you talk and people around you don't even understand what you're talking about. It's like you are you are in a different world of your own. You understand what I'm saying? It's a different world. I grew up as a Methodist and all of them are reverend, right reverend, different kind of reverend, senior reverend. Reverend, Reverend, you know, broken into different places. And then you look at the Bible, this is what is ordained in the Bible. You understand? Know, there is Reverend, you understand? Know, but you, you need to be right, but you look at, okay, there is no confusion in God. God has a purpose, God is doing something here. And I, anytime God sent me to a nation, different nation, the first thing I pray is God, before I, before I go there, you have to give me the love. Of that nation, because if you don't have the love of the nation where God is sending you, you can't be effective. And you go to pray. I went to one nation one day, one time, and God didn't want me to be there. And God decided to open my eyes to every bad thing that was there, so that it would be uncomfortable for me to stay. So because God said, "I'm not staying. I'm not saying you're not going to go there, but I don't want you to stay there." Praise the Lord. But I tell you, since then, every country I've gone to, there is massive love, and I. We do love, we love Netherlands passionately. And we love I am. And I remember the day the Lord said, over the church. When we were going, if we were there, I was sobbing, I was crying like a baby. I was giving my baby out. The Lord said, This is my church. He gave it all. I handed over everything. I love Netherlands. And we remember when we were praying for the Queen. You remember? The Lord said, It's your assignment. Because she's coming to be the queen of this nation. The news just carried there was not. The nations were against the queen, against the prince there. But the Lord said, It's your assignment. She's going to be the queen. Because the paparazzi just called, called, just called them. You know, caught him in America. He was not even here. And then we pray. Today we have a king, we have a queen, and we are proud of them. You know, it is amazing. God is awesome. So, after we left, how many times we talk, we 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 are still we are still Dutch? You understand? Yeah. Uh, we are Dutch. Yeah. Many times we pray, we talk about nation, we do, and the Lord says, "Go back to Netherlands, Africa, go go back to Netherlands, and do prayer work, anoint the place." And we're like, "Should we go to our city? We are not as Amsterdam city. Should we go to our city? It was it or was it all We are praying and praying." And then the last time my prophetic daughter, who was very angry in the spirit, started scolding me. You need to go to Amsterdam. She was serious. 
really seriously furious in the spirit. I had no word. You know, you see, you cannot commonize anointing. You need to respect when God is speaking. It doesn't matter whether a child is speaking or not. She was seriously furious and she went down. Nah, 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 nah. And I kept quiet. And then she said, Oh, mom, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to tell you where to go. And this and I said, Oh, no, it wasn't you speaking. It wasn't you speaking, it was God speaking. And then we came last year, we did prayer work with Minister Stephen. And then we anointed the place. So God said, Go back again. God wants to do great things. Amen. And have a meeting. I said to my I said to Archbishop, she said, Yeah, we are going. Amen. That is the benefit of a family. Amen. That's the benefit of a family. You have a family that believes in you, you believe in them, you do things together, you are ready to go anywhere and do everything that God asks you to do. Amen. And then we started praying. Everybody was praying in different corners. I was linking together with my brother, Apostle Sam, talking and discussing and planning, linking. For months, we were praying and praying and praying. And just about miraculously, he got a number. And God started opening the door for 15 years of my spiritual children that we lost contact with. Miraculously. And I'm telling you, say, it's amazing. Obedience truly is better than sacrifice. Amen. If we didn't, if we didn't obey God last year when the Lord anointed this nation by Himself, these things will not be happening today. We won't be here today. And when I was asking the Lord, I said, God, what is happening? In those days, when we have prayer for the nation, all churches together gather together, we organize it. The government was telling us, telling us, why are you doing prayer for the for, for Nigeria? Prayer meeting every month, and then we change it. Prayer for Nigeria and other African countries. And they called us again. Why are you praying for prayer for Nigeria? That we are not, we are Dutch. We are not that they want us to be Nigerian. And then we change it. Prayer for Nigeria, other African countries, and the Netherlands. <laughs> and then we kept on. Churches were coming. Everywhere we're coming. We are coming together. And now this time we have to go back to the Netherlands. And I started contacting people. And people were like, I'm on my own. And she said, what is happening? God said, yeah, that is why you are going there. We contacted different pastors. In, in, she gave me numbers of people. We contacted people who do not want to associate with other pastors who are afraid of the corruptions of this world. And I said, God, what is happening? God said, that is the reason why you are going there. Things are not the same. And the Lord said to me, that is the reason why I sent Jonah to Nineveh. Yes. People have gone away from me. Initially, Jonah didn't want to go. But you see, the thing is that if God wants to do something, if you don't make yourself available, God will still carry out his assignment. Yes. No one will stop God from doing what he wants to do. Yes. And the Lord said, because I intended Jonah to do it, so I had to carry him by myself, drop him at the, at the entrance of the nation. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes. Express service. You don't need flight. <laughs> you will go by water. And you will be permitted at the entrance of the place. If God wants to do something, let her make yourself available. Because one way or the other, you will get there. But thank God we didn't disobey. Amen. And then what happened? That was the chapter one of Jonah. When you get to chapter three, you know, what happened in that chapter? Let's quickly see. So that I'd like to open scripture so that people say, oh, she does tell us some stories. I don't like telling stories. Praise the Lord. In chapter three of the book of Jonah, if you look at verse five, in each, after he finally got there, the Bible says in verse 5 of chapter 3, it says, So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them, even to the king of Nineveh. And he arose from his throne and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, and no, even animals fasted. Yeah. Yeah. Nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything, let them not feed nor drink water. Mm. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. 
Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fears, anger, and we, that we perish not? The Lord said, I'm looking for one person. He said, whether they listen to you or not, you go there and do the fasting. Amen. Amen. And when I was talking, everything I will relay, and you go to say, oh my God, I'm so, I was talking, I said, I'm so ashamed. I told this the favor, one of our ministers, I said, I'm so ashamed. Because she's touched. I said, I'm so ashamed of what is going on in heaven. That I don't even know what to say to Archbishop. And the one I called her, and she said to me, even if it's one person, we are going. Amen. She didn't even let me even go out and say, this is what happened. She said, even if it's one person, we will go there. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, when you have been sweating and sweating and thinking, how do you go to form this sentence and fashion this? And then somebody just gave you ice cold water that I, I love to drink. When I'm very hot, I drank it. I was like, oh, this is so good. You know, it's amazing. So if it's one person that is coming, we will get there. We will go there. We will do what God wants to do. And the Lord said to me, when I told Gideon to go on the person, he gathered all of them. He said, you have too many people for me to work with. If it's not, they will say it's the, the, if the God is for them. Yeah. He said, no, I had to cut it down to go and fight till I got to my own level. God cut down all the numbers that Gideon took, cut them to 300. How many people go to war for with 300 people? 300 people to go and fight. And I said, no, that is the reason why I did this. That's why the fact of fleece. If you make this, because it will dry, okay? If you make it cold, uh, or wet, okay? Then I, he gave me fleeces, but I needed to use him. And I needed to prove that I'm the one in charge, not him in charge. He's just going there. We are not the one in charge. God is just passing through us. When we obey, God will do things. I tell I tell you something, I love Nazareth passionately. So he broke my heart, he broke my spirit. When I can see pastors, ministers, we said we want to come to your church on Sunday to have fellowship. Oh. Fellowship. We didn't say give us food. We didn't say buy tickets. It's ridiculous. I don't understand. They have prayed. Whatever a man sows, the thing is that if anybody gets a vision sincerely from God, if you have an assignment sincerely of God from God, why are you threatened? Why are you afraid? Why will what other people are doing? Why will it cause you to be in distress? And I said to people, if somebody is coming to my church, if you are coming with them, the moment you get there, you will talk upside down. And you start running. I don't need to pray because angels are there. So even if we have something that that person is afraid of, are you not confident in the fire of God that is in you? Are you not confident in, the God, in, in Jesus that you trust? That people are so afraid of somebody coming to church. Then why are you praying for multiplication, multiplication or increase? And you get my point. I don't, I was like, this is, I think, oh, what is going on in the nether? The Lord said, that is the reason why you are going. You need to decree. You need to go there. When you step there, things need to change. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And suddenly the plan program, suddenly out of nowhere, programs came. Even the people that wanted to come today, one of them said, program said, we don't know where it's coming from. I said, don't worry. This is, I, my, I, told, I told my pastor Stephanie, I said, this is a game that people have been playing for a long time. When, pro, when God is going to visit the place, they will say, oh, ministers, oh, something is going to happen here, and then suddenly they will, they will begin to do anointing service. <laughs> so that you will not go. It doesn't matter who stop God from doing what he wants to do. Praise the Lord. The Lord said to, the Lord said to me, he only took Elijah, just one person, to cause trouble with Ahab, to cause trouble in the kingdom with Ahab. When God, when, when the Lord decided to, to, to stand, he challenged Ahab. Everything went. He said, well, I've made my own decree, and I'm going. I'll come back in three years. This was going to happen. I'm going on a journey. After three years, I'll come back and sort it out. Only at my word. Only at my word. Elijah made the decree, and next day, day, I went on a holiday with God. And then when he went, where, where he went to, God said, I'm rather than we do. Who doesn't have enough? But go there and make her to have enough. Mm. We never know exactly what is happening. We don't even know why we are sent to a place. We, what we need to do, we made the decree, we come, we 
pray, you don't know what's going to happen to you next year. You don't know what's going to happen to you next month. You don't know what's going to happen to you next week. You don't know what's going to happen to me next tomorrow. But because you have taken the step of faith to believe God, to do God's work, I tell you, sincerely, everybody that is here, everybody bought their ticket. We didn't buy a ticket for anybody. It is the love of God. Everybody is working and working for God. It's grace. It's grace. It's the assignment of heaven. There is no way God doesn't owe anybody. There is no way God will not bless anyone that is serving him sincerely. There's no way. There is no way. That is certain. God does not owe anybody. When they say, challenge you with what you have, and you give it up to the Lord. In a miraculous way, you will replenish it. God, our God is awesome. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so the Bible says, it could not say to me, look at. All of them are giving excuses. They say, oh, because there's corruption, oh, because we ask them for money, oh, some of them said we don't go to church anymore. I said, why? Are you going to church for a man? Or do I disobey God deliberately? The Bible said, do not forsake the assembly of one another. He did not say, I'm reasoning with you. There is a place where God said, come, let us reason together. Yeah. But when it come to fellowship, he did not say, come and reason together. He said, do not. Which means, you do not have a choice. There is no excuse. Do not forsake the assembly of one another. It does not matter what is going on. It does not matter what the pastor is doing. You are not going to talk for a pastor. You are not going to talk for an apostle. You are going to talk because God commanded this. Go there and make it make an impact and make the difference. It doesn't matter what excuse. And I said to people, I said, okay, you are in the family. You have siblings born together biologically. Your sister hurts you, your brother hurts you. So are you going to say, okay? Because my sister hurts me, I'm not part of that family anymore. I said, that's how many Christians are doing. They say, oh, pastor hurts me, sister hurts me, brother hurts me. So I detach myself from the kingdom of God. And I don't go to church anymore. You can't do that. We can't do that. We are not allowed to do that. We have to do, we have to obey God, whether it's convenient or is it convenient, we have to be prepared in season and out of season. We need to do what God wants us to do. There is no excuse other the servants of power to say we are disobeying God. It doesn't matter what we are passing through. God wants us to do that what we want to do, and his purpose and his plans is what we are supposed to be after. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Persecution came. Jesus said to his disciples, said, Don't go anywhere, stay here. I'm, going to, I'm rounding up now. Say, so stay here, don't go anywhere. I'm going to give you my power. You, are, you can't function. You can't do anything without my power. Right. I have taught you so many things. You, you didn't even understand what I was, what I was there teaching you. Yeah. I taught you so well. Three years I was with you. You didn't even have a clue of what I was talking about. Jesus had to resurrect and came back and breath of them and give them breath. I said, okay, now I hope you understand me. Understand what I've been teaching you. Now they start to understand what he says. So you can, they can apply this back. So all the things he has taught them. I said, but here, yeah, I have opened your mind, but you still can't do it. You still can't function. You need the infilling of the Holy Spirit yes. to function properly. So wait until I send the power. And then when you finish there, don't stay there. Go all over the world. Amen. And what do they do? That is what the Christians are doing nowadays. They say, well, baptize me with Holy Ghost and fire. I stay in my cubicle. That's what we are doing. Baptize me with I stay in my cubicle. I don't want anybody, don't touch me. My friends is around me. I say, just me and my people. And Jesus said, okay, if you will not go, you will go by force. Mm. You know, there is nothing that happened that God does not allow. So they, they got the baptism of the Holy Spirit and they still stayed in the same place. Upper room, they are still afraid. The fire came. But we don't know what happens in the book of Acts. And then the thing, and the book of Acts, why did the Holy Spirit move? Because there was family involved. Yeah. We need to get involved with family affairs. And when I'm talking about family, you need to identify your family. It's not, I'm not talking about biological family now, I'm talking about kingdom family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That can help things to move according to the purpose of heaven. Yeah. Like GPM. You know what I'm saying? I have other groups too. You know what I'm saying? But uh, you need to identify which one is God leading you to actually function well? Or who is carrying who, who, who is helping you to grow? Because you can be in many groups, you are just there. You know, nobody even knows you exist. 
You know what I'm saying? But when you even there, you need to know that whatever it is that God asks you to do is by grace. And you need to do it fair and trembling. Do it because you are doing it for the Lord, not because you are doing it because somebody is there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So they gave, the Lord gave them power and they still stay there. Yeah. And I said, okay, well, if you are not going to move, I will move. Mm. Close them up. Persecute them. Start killing them. You know, I was telling someone, I said, look, till Jesus will come back, the hand of the Ishmaelites we keep on to be on the hand of the children of Isaac. Because that's what the Bible is written. The Bible says your hand will be against your brother. So nobody can change the word of God. It is written, it is written. You are the one that will protect yourself. Because he said when the trouble is coming, it will not come near your dwelling. So claim your own protection. Yes. But as far as God is as God reigns, and it is written, in the hand of the Ishmaelites, no matter how you pray, we be against the hand of the children of Isaac, which we are. By faith, we are children of Abraham. You understand what I'm saying? So, but we, God, the edge of protection around us is secure, is there. Praise the Lord. So, the Lord said to them, do this. And then they didn't go. Persecution started. The first thing, the Lord did was like, ah, pick James and slaughter James. And then they don't know, ah, this is war. This is serious. All of them around. Started praying. Why are they not praying before? They, they changed the tone of their prayer. They started praying and praying and praying. They locked themselves and started praying. And the Bible says, I don't know if I'm reading the scripture, you go and read. You can ask me for the scripture later, I'll tell you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then Anna said, Oh, this is pleasing to the Jews. Oh, let's take the second in command and tell Peter, Ah, that's A. Upon this rock, I will build my church. If you take Peter, hey, we are doomed. They now started praying. They started praying. I'm going to read that scripture for I'm just what I want to say there. Let's go to let's go to 12 and Acts chapter 12. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Peter was kept in prison. Hallelujah. Amen. And it was Peter was taken because it pleases the Jews. We are happy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He said it's two minutes for me, so I'm not doing it. <laughs> now, he said in verse 7 of Acts chapter 12, And behold, the angel of the Lord came unto him, and the light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off from his hand. Now, the thing is this. He was put in between the gangs. I asked him, I said, how, how comfortable are you when you sleep with somebody on your bed that is not your husband? Mm. Are you guessing my point? How much more? Somebody that was in between the minute the guy, the soldiers, and knowing that tomorrow you are going to die. Mm. But the Bible said Peter was sleeping. How can somebody sleep when you know you're going to die tomorrow? <laughs> the Bible said Peter was sleeping. What has caused you sleepless night? Mm. It wasn't that. Mm. Oh, food, money, mm. oh, trip. <laughs> Peter was going to die the following day. He was in chains, sleeping between the, the guards, the military, inside the side. Because you will see that the Bible said the gates were opening. Gates were opening. You know, and the Bible said he was sleeping. He, he knows he's going to die the following day, and he was sleeping. How can he sleep? But he needed to remember Jesus was sleeping in the boat when there was storm. He said, that, that, that time I failed you. This time around, I'm not going to fail. I better just sleep. Give me sleep because you give us your beloved sound sleep. So he slept. And while he was sleeping, the Bible says, because he was sleeping, that was why he thought it was a dream. The Bible says, Peter thought it was a dream. But the thing you need to know is that he obeyed. That was why the chain fell. The Bible said he got up. Mm. Now he has chains. Yeah. He did not say, remove this chain, unlock the chains for me before I can get up. The angel spoke to him, said, get up. So he got up. And then the chain fell. He got up before the chain. What, are, what is holding you? Yes. What is holding you? He got up before the chain fell. It is after he obeyed God that he started seeing divine intervention, miracles in his life. He got up first, the chain fell, and he followed the angel, and he was following. He, followed. he was still thinking he was dreaming. And he got outside. The angel said, Ah! He said, This is a miracle. Amen. 
I thought I was having a dream. The Bible says, he said, ah, now I know of a surety that God is going to do mighty things through me. Me, I'm paraphrasing now. You know, and then he went. He was in prison. He did not know they were praying for him. I didn't know which house to go to. I didn't know which house to go to. He was in prison. He did not know what was happening outside. They were praying for him. And he got out, divine direction, he went to the right place where they were praying. And all believers said, ah, we cannot believe he's an angel. We will be like, we say, ah, we can't believe. I will call ourselves believers. He knocked the door. The house there went there. Went to the door said, oh, Peter is a door. He said, no, no, no. He, Peter cannot come out. Why are you praying then? Why are they praying? They are praying for release. He got released, and they still can't believe that God intervened. God will, God will divinely intervene in our situation, Amen. whether we believe or we don't believe, because they have given us the assignments, and whatever it is that we are looking unto God for, whatever we are asking God for, even in this nation, whether they like it or not, the revival of God will break through. The fire of God will break through. All those pastors, they will not have sleep, they will not have peace of mind. Hallelujah. Yeah. 